Today I'm going to set up and review the TP-Link AC1750 Smart Wi-Fi Router. This is the Archer A7 model, in case you were wondering. So let's first get it out of the box and start setting it up. The first step is to obviously remove the plastic covering on the box and see what's inside. So when you take the cardboard tray out of the box, you'll find the router itself, a few different pieces of documentation, like a quick start guide. One very important piece of documentation is this card that has your default Wi-Fi network IDs and your default password. You'll need this info to set your router up the first time. In case you do lose this information for some reason, you can also find it on a sticker on the bottom of the router. You also have an ethernet cable and power adapter in the box. Now the quick start guide does do a decent job at walking you through the setup process, but I'll be setting it up today, so feel free to follow along and pause the video if you need time to complete a step. You first want to start off by gently unwrapping the plastic covering on the router's antenna. Take your time with this and be really gentle, and then remove the plastic cover on the router itself. And when you unwrap it, you can see that the AC1750 has a really sleek modern design and pretty good build quality. Now it's time to connect the AC1750 to your internet service provider's modem using the ports on the back of the AC1750. Now there are a few different buttons and ports on the back. There's a power port on the left. This is where you'll plug in the power adapter. There's an on off button to power up the unit, a USB port, which can be used to plug in a USB drive or hard drive and use it as a shared network drive. There's a blue ethernet port to connect to your modem and four orange ethernet ports to connect to any devices that need a wired connection. Now there may already be an ethernet cable connected to your modem. If there isn't, use the provided ethernet cable, plug one end into your modem and the other into the blue port on the back of your AC1750. You can now plug in the provided power adapter to the power port on the back, plug the power adapter into a wall outlet, and you should now see the power indicator on the front light up. If it doesn't, make sure to power on the unit using the button on the back. The indicators on the front will begin blinking and go through their boot up sequence. This could take a few minutes. Once it completes its boot up sequence successfully, all the indicators on the front should turn green. This means that the Wi-Fi is working and that the router is able to connect to the internet. However, we aren't done with the setup process just yet. The rest of the setup can be completed from a computer or phone using the TP-Link Tether app. I'm going to set up the router using my Windows computer. The setup is almost identical on Mac or Linux. You first want to go into your Wi-Fi settings and find the networks that were listed on the card we looked at earlier. On a Windows computer, you can find your Wi-Fi settings in the toolbar on the bottom right-hand corner of your desktop. If you do see the network with the word 5G at the end, I recommend connecting to this network. This is the faster 5G Wi-Fi network. Select the network and it immediately asks you for the network key, aka the password, that was on the card. Enter the password and hit next. This could take a few minutes. Once it finishes connecting, it should display the message, no internet, comma, secured. This is perfectly fine. It just means that there's a bit more setup to do. Next, you want to open up any web browser and type in tp-link wifi.net and hit enter. This opens up a page that asks you to create an admin password for the router. This isn't the Wi-Fi password, just an admin password to manage settings on the router. Most folks will probably set this up just once and never use it again. Type one in and click let's get started. On the next page, it asks you to select your time zone. I'll select mine and click next. On the next window, it asks about IP assignment options. Leave it as default dynamic IP. Unfortunately, the setup isn't very intuitive from here on out. So I recommend clicking on the basic settings tab on top to complete the rest of the setup. On that page, click on the wireless link in the sidebar on the left. This opens up a window where you can change the network name and Wi-Fi passwords for both the 2.4G and 5G networks. You don't need to change these, but I highly recommend doing so to ensure your network is secure. Once you're done, don't forget to click save to save the new network ID and password. Now, when you do change the name of your network or the password, the computer will automatically disconnect from the network that you were originally connected to. And you'll have to go back into your Wi-Fi settings 
and connect to the new Wi-Fi network that you just created and put in your new password in case you created one. Now you should be able to connect to the internet at this point. However, I recommend one extra step to make sure everything works as expected. And that step is updating your router's firmware to the latest version. To do this, click on the update link on the top right-hand corner of the screen. The new page that opens up will let you know if there is an update available. If there is, click the upgrade button under the online upgrade section. This could take a few minutes, and once the update is completed, it will log you out of the interface and reboot the router. At this point, you can just proceed to use the internet, or you can log back in to make sure everything's okay. And that completes the entire setup process. Just another tip in terms of installation, the router can be placed on a table or shelf, or you could use the holes on the bottom to wall mount it. The biggest question for most people buying a router is, how fast is it? Now, I've been using a Netgear AC1200 router for a few years now, and it's very reliable and has performed well. However, when I upgraded to a Verizon Fios 300 Mbps connection, I decided it was time for a faster router that would take advantage of the speed of this connection. So I ran speed tests using the same Verizon Fios connection on both routers to see what the difference really was. And the results were not very surprising. The TP-Link was substantially faster than the Netgear AC1200. This was visible with both upload and download speeds, as you can see here. Even from a real-world usage difference, I could really see the difference in speeds at which pages loaded or YouTube videos played there was definitely a notable difference in speeds. So should you get the TP-Link AC1750? I would have to say yes. If you're looking for an inexpensive router that can handle faster fiber optic internet connections, the AC1750 is a fantastic choice. It's well designed, easy to set up, has a whole lot of cool features, works reliably, and produces a noticeable speed difference when compared to an entry-level router. If you're looking to buy one, I'll leave a link right below the video. Hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.